Okay, so uh, let's dive into something I think we've all felt, but maybe don't always talk about. Yeah. That cocktail of excitement and nerves when we start something new. Yeah. You know that feeling when you're about to walk into a big job interview or first date? Oh, yeah. Or even that first coaching session. We've all been there, right? Yes. It's like your nervous system is doing this weird dance between this is amazing. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh, what if I mess this up? Exactly. And I think for the longest time, I thought those initial, like, chemistry check meetings were all about me as the coach, you know, like proving I was worth their time. Right. But John Whittington's approach to this whole thing was a total game changer for me. Oh, tell me more. He flipped the script. What's so fascinating about Whittington, at least for me, is that he realized that so many coaches, they sort of charge into those first meetings Hmm. trying to like all client with their credentials, you know, all all their techniques and their experience. Yeah. But Whittington, he throws this Mm curveball. He starts at the end. The end. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. How do you even begin a coaching relationship at the finish line? That's a great question. And it's by understanding what that finish line even looks like for the client. Mm-hmm. I think Whittington's big thing is that coaching isn't about him having all the answers. Right. It's about uncovering what success actually looks like for them. So instead of showing up with some like prepackaged solution, right. he helps the client define their own version of success. Exactly. He actually has this like brilliant question that he'll ask. Imagine kind of like overhearing this in a session. Let's say it's six months from now, and this coaching has been like a smashing success. Okay. How are people experiencing you differently? Wow. It's like stepping into a time machine and feeling that success in the present moment, you know? I can see how that would shift the entire dynamic. Completely. It's suddenly not about you proving yourself as the coach in that moment, but it's about collaboratively creating a vision for the future. And that's where the real magic happens. By starting at the end, Whittington kind of helps the client relax dream big, and open up to possibilities without feeling all this pressure to perform. Right. Or feel like they need to have all the answers right away. It's more like, let's just paint this picture of success together and Mm -hmm. figure out the how later. Yeah. It's like that quote, begin with the end in mind, but applied to something as like personal as coaching. But let's be real. Even with that future focus, those initial meetings can still be a bit awkward, right? (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) You have two people both with their own anxieties and expectations, and they're trying to figure each other out. It's like that moment you meet someone at a party and you're both trying to decide if you vibe or not. And in coaching, I feel like it's even more vulnerable because it's not just small talk. Totally. You're diving into like potentially really sensitive areas of your life and work. Precisely. And the last thing you want is for those anxieties to hijack the entire session. Right. But here's the thing about Whittington. He doesn't shy away from those like awkward elephant in the room moments yeah in fact he kind of like embraces them okay now that's interesting so most people try to just like smooth over the awkwardness right but he leans into it he does it's brilliant Mm -hmm. he believes that acknowledging those anxieties makes people feel seen and heard okay and that it creates this space of authenticity Mm -hmm. right from the start right i remember him sharing this anecdote about a client who was to be frank bored with their own life story okay let alone telling it to a coach. Oof, that's going to be a tough one for a coach to navigate. Did he just, like, power through? Not at all. He paused, and he said something like, you know, I get it. It's easy to feel like our stories have been told a thousand times, even to ourselves, and they can kind of lose their shine. But what if we approach this with, like, fresh eyes? What if there's something hidden in your story that's, like, waiting to be rediscovered? Wow, That's such a skillful way to acknowledge the client's experience without making them feel wrong or pushing past their, like, discomfort. That's just classic Whittington, right? Yeah. He has this knack for taking something potentially awkward or uncomfortable (laughs) and transforming it into this genuine moment of connection. Yeah. And you know what? That simple act of acknowledging the client's boredom actually deepened their bond. They ended up having a breakthrough session. That's incredible. And I think it just reminds us that sometimes the most powerful coaching moments come from those moments of embracing the uncomfortable and being willing to go off script a little bit. It's like that saying, you know, the truth will set you free, but first it'll probably make everybody feel a little weird. Oh, for sure. And speaking of truth, one thing that really struck me about Whittington's chemistry checks Mm. was 
how little he talks about himself. Yeah. Like he hates when coaches use those early sessions to, you know, show off their fancy certifications mm -hmm. or just like rattle off a laundry list of big name clients they've worked with. It's like, yeah, yeah, we get it. You're like a coaching rock star. But what about U.S.? Exactly. And Whittington really believes that kind of like self-promotion, it creates distance, not connection. Yeah. He says the best coaches, they don't need to tell you how great they are. Their impact speaks for itself. So if a client asks about his experience, which let's be honest, they probably do. How does he handle that without it turning into like a sales pitch? Well, it's subtle, but he masterfully redirects the focus back to the client's needs. Yeah. You know, he might say something like, you know, every client, every situation is unique. What matters most is finding the right fit for you. Yeah. So let's talk more about what you're hoping to get out of coaching. It's almost like he's saying, look, I'm confident in my abilities, but this isn't about me. Like, this is about you and what you want to achieve. Exactly. And I think that level of confidence, like Andy client centeredness, it's incredibly reassuring, especially for someone new to coaching or who's feeling kind of vulnerable. Yeah, it takes the pressure off of them to be like impressed by the coach's credentials and lets them focus on what really matters, mm -hmm. their own, you know, growth and transformation. And that's actually where Whittington's approach gets even more interesting. Yeah. He doesn't just focus on the individual client and like their immediate challenges. He takes this much broader view. Okay. He calls it uh, taking in the whole system. Okay. So we're not just talking about their work life here, right? We're talking about like their entire ecosystem, family, friends. Precisely. He wants to understand the client's place, not just in their workplace, but also in their family, their upbringing, even their like broader social and cultural context. He believes that to create lasting change, you have to address, like, the whole person, not just the part that shows up to work. That makes so much sense. But how do you even begin to, like, unpack all of that in those early sessions? It seems like you'd need a whole team of, like, therapists and sociologists to even scratch the surface. Well, Whittington has this really cool technique where he uses, like, everyday objects. Imagine this. You walk into his office. And there's a table with a bunch of cups and saucers, like, scattered around. Cups and saucers. Okay, now I am really intrigued. What are those supposed to represent? So he uses them to represent different people or, like, elements in the client's life. Oh. He might say, let's say this teacup, this represents you, and this saucer is your family. Where would you place yourself in relation to them? It's like creating a visual map of their internal world. Exactly. And it's so fascinating to see how people respond. Yeah. Some people immediately place themselves at the center. Right. Others on the periphery. Some cluster everything close together, while others create these, like, vast distances between objects. Oh, I bet. I can only imagine the insights that emerge from that simple exercise. It kind of, like, bypasses all the intellectualizing and gets straight to the heart of, like, those unspoken dynamics. Yeah, yeah, and it's not just about family either. He might use mm -hmm. the objects to represent, like, their team at work, their mentors, even their own internal beliefs and values. Oh. It's just this powerful way to help clients kind of see those hidden patterns and connections that might be driving their behaviors. It's like holding up a mirror to their subconscious and saying, look, this is the landscape that we're working with here. Yeah. Because so much of coaching is about bringing those unconscious patterns into conscious awareness. Exactly. Whittington believes that once those patterns are like brought to light, then clients can start to make more conscious choices about how they show up in the world. Right. They're no longer at the mercy of those old scripts and limiting beliefs. It's like he's saying, OK, let's rewrite your story. But first, let's make sure you're the one holding the pen. I love that. OK. And speaking of stories, one of my favorite things about Whittington's approach is his emphasis on what he calls catching the crumbs. Catching the crumbs. OK, I have to know more. What does that even mean? So it's about paying attention to those like seemingly insignificant details, those throwaway comments or, you know, nonverbal cues that most people would probably miss or dismiss. Yeah. Give me an example. Give me an example. OK, so imagine a client's describing like this really challenging situation at work and they might say something like, it's fine. You know, I'm used to dealing with difficult personalities. It's <laughs> just kind of how things are in this industry. And I feel like a lot of coaches would probably, like, accept that at face value. But I get the sense that Whittington would dig a little deeper there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He would catch that crumb, that quick dismissal, that subtle, like, sigh, and gently probe a little further. Okay. He might say something like, you say you're used to it, but I hear, like, a hint of resignation in your voice. 
I'm curious, what's the cost of being, you know, used to those dynamics? It's like he's hearing what's being said and what's not being said. You know? Exactly. And that's where those like crumbs become so valuable. They often reveal the client's deeper fears, their limiting beliefs, even those subconscious patterns that might be holding them back. It's like he's like a detective piecing together these clues to help the client solve their own inner mysteries. I love that analogy. And he doesn't just like hoard those crumbs either. Yeah. He finds these really skillful ways to like feed them back to the client in a way that's insightful but not overwhelming. So it's not about casting them in a contradiction or like putting them on the spot, you know. Not at all. It's about holding up that mirror and saying, hey, I noticed this. What do you make of it? Yeah, it's about empowering them to explore their own like blind spots, but with curiosity and compassion. Precisely. And sometimes those tiny frums, mm. they lead to the biggest breakthroughs. It's like he's saying, look, I see you, like all of you, even the parts you might not be showing me yet. Yes. Yeah. And that's such a powerful foundation, I think, for building that trust and rapport in those like early sessions. Uh. But one thing I think that really sets Whittington apart is his willingness to, like, walk away. Walk away. You mean, like, turn down potential clients? Yeah. Because isn't the whole goal to help as many people as possible? Well, you would think so. But Whittington believes that, like, forcing a coaching relationship when the chemistry is just not there doesn't do anyone any favors. Right. He says, sometimes the most ethical and compassionate thing you can do as a coach is to recognize that you're not the right fit for a particular client. Oh, wow. That takes, like real guts, especially in a field where there can be so much pressure to say yes to like every opportunity. How does he even approach that conversation? Like, how do you tell someone they're not the right fit without making them feel, you know, rejected or inadequate? He's incredibly upfront and honest about his process. He might say something like, you know, I've been reflecting on our conversation. And while I really resonate with your goals, I'm not sensing that like click that I believe is essential for a successful coaching partnership. And I would never want to take you on as a client unless I was fully confident that I could, like, serve you at the highest level. So he's essentially giving them an out. Yeah. Even before they've, like, signed on the dotted line. Yeah. That's, like, so respectful. It's incredibly empowering because he wants the client to feel like they have agency. Like, okay. they're choosing coaching. They're not being sold on it. And I imagine that level of transparency from the coach probably makes the people he does choose to work with feel even more seen and valued. Exactly. It's like he's saying, I don't just work with anyone. I work with people that, you know, I believe in and who believe in me. And that is the foundation of like a truly powerful coaching relationship. Couldn't have said it better myself. You know, this entire deep dive into Whittington's approach has just been like a masterclass in these subtle but really essential elements of like genuine human connection. And I think we so often think about coaching just in terms of, you know, techniques and strategies and like, what do I do? Yeah. But what I'm hearing is that it's about so much more than that. Absolutely. It's about showing up authentically, being present with the client's experience and like trusting that sometimes the most profound transformations come from those, you know, unexpected moments of vulnerability and connection. Yeah. It's about like, catching the crumbs and recognizing that sometimes the smallest details reveal like the biggest truths. Yes. And I think most importantly, it's about being willing to start coaching from like the very first encounter, even if it's just, you know, what we've been talking about, this chemistry check. Yeah. Because those seemingly insignificant interactions, mm -hmm. those might just plant the seeds for, you know, a lifetime of growth and transformation. Beautifully said. Well, on that note, we'll leave you with this final thought from John Whittington himself. Good chemistry follows from finding your own authentic stance. It's a powerful reminder, I think, that the most effective coaches, they aren't trying to be someone they're not. Right. They're comfortable in their own skin. And I think that authenticity, that's what really allows them to connect with their clients on like a much deeper level. So as you go about your week, whether you're, you know, a seasoned coach or simply navigating all the complexities of your own life, we invite you to ask yourself, what would it look like to bring a little more of your authentic self to every interaction? What crumbs might you be missing in your own conversations? And how can you use those subtle cues to create deeper connections, unlock new levels of understanding? Until next time, keep diving deep, keep exploring those hidden depths, and keep embracing the power of, you know, genuine human connection.